Would you welcome Ellen Corby? You see how smoothly things are going tonight after yeah. well, last I'm, week? I sat back there and wasn't sure I was going to make it. Again. Yeah, how are you? <laughs> nice to have you back here tonight. And congratulations on three-time winner. That's right. Yeah, you do a remarkable job on that show. Well, I love the show, and it's not hard. I mean, I do the best I can. And if it comes out Emmy-wise, then I'm just a very lucky person. You, you don't find acting hard work, or do you, is the show so enjoyable that it becomes... A pleasure. There's many people who well, don't enjoy what they if do. If it were hard work, I wouldn't do it. Really? Absolutely. I have to love what I do or I, I don't do it. Yeah, don't you feel for some, some people who have a job that they, they must get up and go to every day? Then I'm sure that that happens, who don't really like what they do and kind of get yeah. trapped but don't well, have any I choice. I think life's too short to throw it away. And I think that if you live long enough, which apparently I have, you have to enjoy it because I'm not sure if it's how many times around, but it might be just one. And boy, you better enjoy it. Yeah, I think you're probably right. As far as we know, we haven't had any scientists say hard evidence that we, we got another shot at it. And what was it the late comedian Joey Lewis used to say? You only live once, but if you play your cards right, once is enough. <laughs> huh? Always remember that. Did you have an acceptance speech ready? That's an old question, but... Uh... You've no, already given two, I, I'm so. about as prepared for this as I was for that. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I... Uh, you mentioned something about that I didn't understand at the time. Oh, about well... About the stopwatch. Yeah, well, very few people got it, unless they've known me for years. But I was sitting there trying to think of what to say, because my friend had a hunch that I was going to win. And that day I had received three <coughs> ladybugs, which is my lucky charm. And I began to think, well, what would I say? If I start thanking people for 43 years in the picture business, it would take much more than that half hour that they allot, a half a minute that they allotted us. And I kept thinking, well, and when I went out, I said I couldn't make an acceptance speech because I didn't have my stopwatch. So, because I had been a script clerk for 11 years, the first 11 years in the picture business. A matter of fact, the first two years that I acted, every time they would, they would say uh, action my hand would go up and I would doing more of the Zezu Pitts type of gestures you In other words, the stop wraps around and you don't yeah. get the time. I used to time scenes all the time and then when I heard them say action, my hand would go up to click a watch. It wasn't there, you know. So when you said on the thing, I don't have my stopwatch, that was in reference to being and a script And I, I have gotten letters from script clerks that I knew many years ago <laughs> and turned out all right. Is that, was, was that your entree? Is that the, the job you got to get into being an actress? In other words, take... Well, that no, it, it was sort of thrown at me. I, I came out, I was quite young, and I came out and I was already, I was going to be the greatest, you know. Well, in short order, I found out that that isn't the way it worked. So I did a little extra work. I did three double jobs until they told me I wasn't a double, and I said, I know it, I'm getting out of this. So I went to a place called Poverty Row, where they made pictures on a shoestring. And I got myself a job acting for no money. And uh, they couldn't afford a script clerk, and I hung around till they got enough money to make it. Nobody believes this. But in order to make the picture, a nephew had to sell a paper route for $1,500. That was how... That's how they make the picture. It was really a shoestring thing. So they made me the script girl, and I didn't have any idea what it was all about. And so... Uh, as a matter of fact, my mother furnished the lunches. So, um, when it was all paid, the only, uh, when it's all made, the only one that got paid was my mother. And the producers used to come to our apartment at night and finish up the food that was left from lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> Business has changed a little bit, hasn't it? Yeah, now they come for breakfast. <laughs> I noticed this the other night that you, I, I think this is the dress you had on the other night. We just spoke briefly. Uh, I understand this. Has you some... mean the night? The show, uh, the night, make it? Yes, the night of the well, crisp of shows past, the ghost of show yeah. past. Well, uh, I made it and the dress made it again. It's, a, it's from Morocco. Yeah, somebody told me you, you, traveling is something you enjoy doing. Yeah, I, lo I love to travel. I'm quite a traveler. Did you go by yourself? Oh, Just yes. Just get up and... Oh, yes. Most, most of my trips are alone. I used to go with my mother and once in a while with a friend. But uh, I... You, he who travels alone travels the fastest, yeah. and I do pretty well. Do you feel comfortable, secure? Uh, 
Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't think the other way. Yeah. So I've had few experiences. What's I, the story? I think we were going to, I, I wanted to talk to you about the other, somebody mentioned about with a, I don't know, there was a cab, cab driver, a taxi driver? Well, or yeah, that was, that was a wonderful experience. I was, I was um, on, on my way, well, I was in Rabat, but I was wanted to see the, a woman that I had met on a boat going from Tangiers to uh, Gibraltar. That's about the only way you can get to Gibraltar anymore. Now, Slazik was her name, and I helped her buy appliances because she and her husband, who was in her diplomatic service, were setting up in Rabat, so I wanted to see her. Only there two nights, so I hurried out of the hotel the first night and grabbed a cab, and uh, uh, two people got out, and I started to get in. Two people rushed in, and off went the cab, and I'm saying, and so another cab came along, and two people got out, and I got in before anybody could do anything, gave the man a slip of paper, and there was a, a quick exchange, and I could see them, and I didn't understand what they're talking about, but obviously they wanted him back there, and he said he would be back, and he pointed to me, and off we went. Well, to make a long story longer, uh, we arrived at the, at the apartment, and there was a grill work up, and I didn't know how to get into it. It was a beautiful apartment house. And so the, uh, the, the driver helped me out. They got a caretaker, and I got in. They weren't home. I left a note under the door. And on the way back, I was thanking him. And I suddenly became conscious, and he spoke very, very beautiful English. So I said, uh, I compliment him on it. And he's, I said, where did you study? And he said, at the Sorbonne. I said, in Paris? Well, what are you doing here driving a cab? And he says, lady, this isn't a cab. And uh, I, you know, I'm glad it was dark because I turned every color of the... Did you just jumped into somebody's... I jumped into somebody's car and... Uh, <laughs> and handed him the paper? And handed him the paper and he took me where I was going and then I finally... <laughs> I finally found out that these were his friends and that he was going there to pick up his girlfriend. And uh, so I said, well, but you pointed to me. You know, what were you saying when you pointed to me? And he says, well, I told my friends I just wanted to see what that crazy woman wanted. <laughs> so you jump in, Gavin, and he took? Uh-huh. Well, that's a nice guy. Yeah, I can't imagine it happening here. No, can, can you? you see that? Mm -hmm. Or in New York City, jumping into a private car and giving them a slip of paper, they'd take you right to Bellevue and leave, <laughs> leave you in a basket on the doorstep. But well, that sounds like a wonderful, wonderful things trip. Things like then. that happen. You got another trip planned, someplace you'd like to visit you've never been? Uh, no, mm -hmm. you, you well, yes and no. Yes yeah. and no. I, I want to go back to India, and I want to go back to other places that I've been. I think the second time around is more interesting. Yeah. Because the first time you do the tourist bit, and the, the second time you know where you're going. That makes sense. I think we have to cut away here for a second. We'll be right back. Okay. Stay there.